Some call him the master of disaster, but he's certainly a master of Bayham. Let's rank his film. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well out there. And today we're going to rank Michael Bay's films. But before getting into it, like, comment, subscribe. Join me here. I really would appreciate that. Yes, we're going to rank all 15 films in Michael Bay's filmography. I saw Ambulance the other night. I dropped my out of the theater reaction on Wednesday and I figure what the hell let, let's rank all of his films and we're going to start off with number 15 Transformers 2 Revenge of the Fallen now this was a rush production I will give Michael Bay that they were trying to beat the writer's strike they went into production without a finished script and they made a lot of stuff up on set but this is a bloated mess of the film narrative wise there's a lot of unnecessary gobbledygook thrown in here with mythology and all this crap it's not a very good film. Now, I can sit down and enjoy the action scenes. I think Shia LaBeouf is still very charismatic here. Megan Fox is, I think, better in this one than she is in the first film. Like, she might have took some acting lessons. I don't know. And all the other characters are fine. I don't think there's too many characters, but all the other actors are fine here for what they're given to do. I think John Turturro's character is even more a little over the top in this one than he was in the first one. And I love John Turturro, but... Again, they bring him back again. He's fine. It's just overblowed, bloated, overblown mess of a film with some cool action scenes. I'll give Michael Bay that. It's, it's to that by that point, by the point that Transformers Two came around, Michael Bay was this was secondhand. Him, you could film a cool action scene in his sleep almost. And there's certainly some really cool visuals here and some cool action scenes. But this is by far his worst film. So yes, at number fifteen, Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen. At number fourteen, another Transformers film, Transformers Five. The last night. Now, just to be upfront about this, I am an unapologetic Michael Bay fan. I've said this many times over the last couple, couple weeks. Now, even his worst films, I can watch. My son loves the Transformers films, even the bad ones. I can sit down and watch them and just take in the, the mayhem or bayham on screen. So I have just recently rewatched these two films, the, the second one and this one, the fifth one, the last night. Again, Overbloated mess. They brought in Mark Wahlberg in the fourth one. I like Mark Wahlberg. He's charismatic here. He's doing the best he can. Anthony Hopkins is in this one, and Anthony Hopkins can do this role in his sleep, and he's he's good here. He's funny. Um, John Turturro's back in a small role. There's some cool action again, and there's some awesome visuals that you would expect from a Michael Bay film, and there's some great disaster moments for sure. And they try to bring in Unicron at the end. Now, obviously, they're not going to continue that storyline. At least I don't think they are. I'd love to see Unicron on screen, just not the way they were going to do it, but this is definitely not a great film. It's it's a big narrative mess, again, with cool visuals and some cool action set pieces. And where the hell does Optimus Prime disappear to in the final battle for like 15 minutes? He's off screen, and then all of a sudden he appears at the end to save the day. I hate that shit, and, he, and it happens a lot in these films, but this one's definitely the most egregious one with it. So at number 14, Transformers 5, The Last Night. At number 13, Transformers 4... Age of Extinction. It's funny, the first, the first three I'm listing here are Transformers films. This one is, again, there's some really cool action scenes here. The Dinobots, when they do show up, that was the promise this film made. They don't show up until like the last 15, 20 minutes and they're barely on screen. When they are on screen, they look pretty damn cool. This is, again, an overbloated mess, overblown spectacle. I mean, there's some spectacular shit going on on screen and Mark Wahlberg is definitely a cool replacement for Shia LaBeouf and he's good here for what he's given to do but overall this is way too long this is like two hours and 45 minutes it's 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 a half hour 40 minutes way too long the action scenes just keep going bigger is not always better Michael Bay can create some awesome action scenes but in this film they just keep going and going and going and they never end and it's like it's too much so yes at number 13 Transformers 4 Age of Extinction. Now, again, I could watch all these films because my son loves them, but they're not great films. Number 12, Six Underground. This is the film Michael Bay did back in 2019 for Netflix. And it has a good cast here, and I like the premise of the story. Where my problem is, again, there's some cool visuals and there's some cool action if I could see what in the hell is going on. And I think this is a problem sometimes with Bay's films, especially with the editing. There's so much quick cutting in this film, and it's even more egregious than most of his films. It's so jarring that I really couldn't tell sometimes what in the hell actually was going on. I knew there was explosions, there was gunfire, but I don't know who was in, like, who got killed or what the hell just happened because it's so quick cut and tightly shot. I don't know. 
So I like Ryan Reynolds here in the cast. Again, I like the premise of the story. I just wish I could see what the hell is going on. So at number 12, six underground. At number 11, Pearl Harbor. Now, I will say up front, the love story, the the, the three-way love story here with Ben Affleck, Josh Hartnett, and Kate Beckinsale doesn't work on multiple levels. And it's so cheesy and overblown. And it takes up a good chunk of the first half of the film. Yes, we do see some more stuff and people training and Ben Affleck goes off to, to England to fight the Germans there, and then he crashes and they think he's dead, and that's what starts her relationship with Josh Hartnett's character. All the leads here are good. I like Kate Beckinsale as an actress. I think she's good here. I think Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnett have really good chemistry, but the love story sucks the life out of the first half of this film. Then you get to the Battle of Pearl Harbor, the bombing of Pearl Harbor, and it's shot spectacularly. I will contend this has some of the best war scenes ever filmed, and he filmed a lot of it for real. Shorter CGI involved, but it's one of the biggest explosions ever put on screen in Pearl Harbor when the bombing happens. It's spectacular, and it's exciting, and it's well shot and well staged. I absolutely love that part of it. And then we get the third act where they do the Doolittle Raid, which seems like a tacked-on sequence, like... I know why it's there, but still, the second, from when the Pearl, bombing of Pearl Harbor through the end, I really, really like this movie. It's well done. It's the love triangle that sucks it down, but I can still watch this film and have a hell of a good time with it and laugh at the love story part, but the battle scenes are spectacular, so at number 11, Pearl Harbor. At number 10, Transformers 3, Dark of the Moon. Now, this flip-flops with the first one from my favorite Transformers film. I actually really like this film. Yes, again, it's overblown. But the action is really spectacular. It's probably the best action in, this, in the Transformer out of all five Transformers films. I really do think it is. It's well staged. I think it's really big and spectacular. And I like Shia LaBeouf again here back again. And the other, again, the cast is too big. There's too many characters. But at the end of the day, I really like Transformers Dark of the Moon. So at number 10, Transformers 3 Dark of the Moon. Number nine, the original Transformers. I think this has the most the best story out of all the Transformers films. And it's, it's core, it, at its core, it's about a boy getting his car and it's a relationship between Bumblebee and Shia LaBeouf's character, Sam. And I think that really works. And I liked that. When I first saw it, I didn't love it when I saw this back in the summer of 2007. I was living in California at the time. I didn't care for it. I actually was pissed at this movie. I had to go see it again to think that I missed something because all my friends were raving about it. It took me a little bit of time to get here, but I do think the first Transformers film is pretty damn good. So yeah, at number nine, the original Transformers. At number eight, the film I just saw the other night, Ambulance. If you haven't seen it yet, and judge it by the box office, you haven't. If it's still in the theaters, I suggest it's a pretty cool theatrical experience. I think it's about 20 minutes too long. And this is a theme with some of the Bay films that they should be cut down a little bit. Because there's definitely points in this film you can see that things could have been cut out. But at the end of the day, it's still a really good action thrill ride. And the cast is great here. And Bay gives us some of his most best chase scenes in a long time. And it's definitely his best film since 13 Hours. And I know a lot of people will be screaming, that doesn't say much, but it is his best film since 13 Hours, in my opinion. So yes, at number eight, Ambulance. At number seven, let's go to Disasterville, baby, Armageddon. Armageddon is just so much fun. Yes, it's cheesy. It's over the top. A lot of this shit doesn't make a hell of a lot of a sense, but it has a great cast, has some great effects for its time. You got to give it props for when it was made. And this was a kind of rush production too. Michael Bay didn't have a whole lot of time to complete this film. He even said if he had more time, he thinks he thinks he can make it better. But between the cast, their, their chemistry, and even though the story's over the top, you can't help but cheer for these guys to succeed and save the earth. It's just a fun, thrill ride, disaster film of a film. And... I really like this film. As a matter of fact, I might watch it tonight. What the hell? So yeah, number seven, Armageddon. At number six, the original Bad Boys, the one that gave Michael Bay a career. I always flip-flop between Bad Boys 1 and Bad Boys 2 in Michael Bay's filmography. But I really like Bad Boys. It's a really good buddy cop movie with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence with great chemistry. There's, you know, it made Will Smith a star and it gave Michael Bay his career and Michael Bay, no matter if you love him or hate him, some people say he's the Satan of cinema. I don't buy that. I think he's a pretty damn good filmmaker at times. And this film really showed his style. And it, it established his style because every time you watch one of his films, in the first shot of the film, you know it's a Michael Bay film. And I love that about filmmakers that they have. John Carpenter's the same way. James Cameron's the same way. David Fincher's the same way. 
Christopher Nolan, you see one frame of their film and you know whose film it is. And I always appreciate that about a filmmaker. And it's not different with Michael Bay. So yeah, at number six, Bad Boys 1. At number five, Bad Boys 2. Yes, this is bigger, more over the top, but the action is effing spectacular here. That freeway chase sequence when they're throwing the cars off the back of the truck. Um, the final confrontation in Cuba is spectacularly shot and staged. There's some great comedy here. The chemistry between Martin Lawrence and Will Smith is back, along with the, the, the supporting cast. I love Bad Boys 2. It always brings a smile to my face. So yes, at number five, Bad Boys 2. At number four, Pain and Gain. I actually really think this is a really great film. I think it's the best performance The Rock's ever given on screen. I think The Rock's good in a lot of things, but this is the first time he really went for it, and he's fantastic. I think Mark Wahlberg's really good. Anthony Mackie's good. They all play off each other really, really well, along with the supporting cast. You got Ed Harris in here, who's always fantastic. This is based on a true story. Now, Michael Bay did take some liberties, and there's been some controversy about that, but at the end of the day, I think this is a really well-done film, and I enjoyed the shit out of it when I saw it in the theaters, and I own all these films in some format or another, and I own Pain and Gain, so at number four, Pain and Gain. At number three, a film I just watched, and it's right there on Blu-ray, The Island. This is one of those films, there's always those films that you kind of want to see but slip through the cracks and you don't really think about them all that much. And this is one of those films. I remember when it was released, I remember the trailers. It came and went from theaters fairly quickly. And I kind of just forgot about it over the years, even though I'm kind of, I'm a Michael Bay, I'm unapologetic I'm a fan of Michael Bay. So when I sat down and watched this about a month ago, I thoroughly loved it. I mean, it's not perfect, but I really think it's a strong sci-fi action movie. Now, there's an argument to be made once we get out of the facility, it turns into a standard Michael Bay film, but I was there for it, baby. And nobody brings destruction better than Michael Bay, and the action's really cool. The story up front is really interesting and fascinating. So yes, at number three, The Island. At number two, the one film... This is probably Michael Bay's most mature film, I would say. 13 Hours, based on the true events of Benghazi. And Michael Bay does a good, th a smart thing here. He, Because it would have been easy to get bogged down in the politics of it. Because at the time when this film was made, there was a lot of politics around it. No matter what side you lean on, it, there was a lot of politics surrounding it. But at the end of the day, people died there. And there was these men that fought off these guys that were trying to siege this compound. And they successfully held them off, although, again, sadly, people died. And I think Michael Bay did a nice job of bringing that to the big screen. It was a lower-budgeted film compared to what he's used to with the Transformers films. He had the real guys on set to give him advice and tell him how things actually went down. I read the book. I've seen interviews with the guys that were there. I think Michael Bay captured the essence of it. Obviously, I'm sure liberties were taken, and from what I read, there was. But I think at the end of the day, this is a really good war film. So at number two, 13 hours. At number one, it's fairly obvious because it's right there next to Bad Boys, is his second feature film, The Rock. What to say about The Rock? For before, Besides the fact I think it's one of the best action films in the 90s, if not the best, best action film in the 90s, between the cast, Sean Connery, Nick Cage, Ed Harris, you got John C. McGinley down the line, Michael Bean, you have all these great characters, William Forsyth, a great cast, a great script. Yes, there's some over-the-top moments, but they know just when to pull back to keep it kind of realistic. And Ed Harris isn't your typical bad guy. He's not this mustache twirling villain. He's not just pure evil. He actually thinks he's doing this for the right reasons, even though we all know the way he's going about it is the wrong way. But at least he thinks he's righteous. And those bad guys are always the most interesting. And at the end, towards the end of the film, when he decides that he, there's no way he can kill hundreds of thousands of people with this chemical weapon, and him and his men end up shooting at each other with the Mexican standoff, it's just fantastic. And Harris plays the shit out of it. And Nick Cage and Sean Connery has some awesome chemistry. And Michael Bay captures it spectacularly. And plus, again, the action scenes are spectacular. Again, I love The Rock. It's a great action film. If you've never seen it, check it out. It's awesome. So there are, that's my Michael Bay rankings. All 15 films ending with number one, The Rock. What is your favorite Michael Bay film? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video. Really would appreciate that. I'll be back soon with Mr. Majestic and the first of the AVP films. But until then, bye.